live from the Mandalay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's The Cube at IBM Insight 2014. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for IBM Insight. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's independent broadcast. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE. My co-host, Dave Vellante, chief analyst at Wikibon, also the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media. And we're excited to bring you Chris Brown, who's involved in an investor, speaker, uh, CEO of STEM, um, STEM, Resource Partners at Craig Brown, PhD. I'm assuming you have a PhD, so <laughs> PhD's in, the, in your Twitter handle. Chris, welcome to theCUBE. Craig, Thank, Craig, uh, thanks. Craig, right? Uh, it is Craig. Craig, Craig. okay. It's okay, That's okay Craig, sorry. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the updating the, uh, the teleprompter. Chris. Oh, there's no <laughs> teleprompter. No teleprompter. <laughs> Craig <laughs> Brown, so sorry, you know. We, uh, get those teleprompters fixed. Oh, we don't have teleprompters. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank um, you. So you're investing uh, in companies, we want to get that in a second. Obviously STEM is hot right now. You're seeing a lot of things, women in tech, you're seeing the democratization of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, and you know, Dave and I love talking about this topic because we we love this Internet of Things connected network where humans are part of it. Yep. And now you're seeing a humanization. IBM calls it cognitive computing, an element of some of the tech involved. But really, the humanization of tech has moved from a geek culture, mm -hmm. male-dominated, you know, computer scientist guys to everybody now. So, so this is really a cool shift in our, our world right now. It is. What are you seeing and what are some of the things you're working on? Talk about the, the STEM uh, pro resource program and, and your investments and what you're working on. What we try to do with STEM is identify resources. The resources may be um, in, uh, enthusiasms, folks that have an interest, that don't have a background in, in STEM, uh, or uh, experienced STEM resources that have um, previous job-related background or education and connect them to real job opportunities um, because there's quite a few out there. Um, what we try to do to bridge the gap is offer training, uh, if that's necessary, and I'm a big proponent on certifications. I actually have acquired 25 IT certifications uh, over a 25 year period in my career. So I'm a big proponent of that as a testament of knowing the technology that they were interested in learning about. Um, but the other, the other programs can be more simple. Um, it could be associated with uh, just letting them you know, touch the, the software, the hardware, to get some familiarity with it. But the, the key is generating interest. Um, hopefully the, the, the youth and or senior citizens in some cases, or somewhere in between, are interested in just basically finding a way of life for themselves and using technology as a way to get there. You know, Dave, we talk about this all the time, people who have seen the movie The Social Network. It's also kind of a pun, but it's also fun to talk about, oh, you know, I want to be Mark Zuckerberg. This younger generation, Dave, they see this and they go, wow, I could be a billionaire too. And what's, the reality is, is that, you know, Amazon Web Services now with Blue Mix to the Cloud, it's really easy to boot up a venture. Mm -hmm. So that really creates an opportunity for anybody to do anything cool, and, and we're living in an age of drones, right. gaming cultures. There's a maker movement that we've commented, Craig, in the past, that looks like, the Apple Computer Homebrew Club, where <laughs> there's a lot of tinkering going on, Yes, but it's very cool. It is very cool. Um, what are you seeing? What's the coolest thing that you guys see? I mean, you probably see these fresh ideas. We have taken, and, and for example, kids that are into gaming, and they don't know anything about technology from the perspective of an IBM or uh, a software company or hardware company, and, but, but they have that gaming, um, and, their, and their, their reflexes are good, and, and their interest is there. And you know, we introduced them to the programs. There's some, there's some online programs that allow them to learn how to develop games. So I say, hey, you know, why don't you come up with your own football game or your own basketball game and maybe make it look, maybe make all the players look like your friends um, when you play and pick up basketball and, you know, around the corner or at the church. Um, and make it more realistic to your experiences playing basketball. Because no, you're not an NBA player, but you fantasize about becoming an NBA player. So how do you turn that into a career um, from a development standpoint. And so I, I bridge the interest in something they already know how to do with um, a new world and, and, and it, it tends to work. You know, Craig, one of the things we love about the internet is it really shows that the, the middleman uh, is gone. And whether you're talking about old line businesses mm -hmm. to just access to markets for yep. opportunities, yep. the middleman's gone, it democratizes things, that's the big buzzword. But like, even take about the NBA, for instance, like the athletes themselves and people are going direct to the audiences. Yep. You're seeing even on ESPN, you're seeing tweets now there yep. because the, the power of the individual is really in the hands of what their creativity. 
That's correct. Um, so this is a massive trend, and it's really changing some of the old guard kind of things. It is. From funding um, and, and everything else. So let's talk about the, the access with, to funding. So let's talk about your investing in, in these ideas. And Peter Thiel is controversial in Silicon Valley where I live, mm -hmm. around he's paying people not to go to college. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I don't know if I agree with that. And <laughs> yeah, I, I would, I would, I'm with you on that. However, but he's, he's highlighting an issue, pretty radical idea, and he's kind yep. of a radical, but he's kind of out there. Mm -hmm. and he, he, when you've got billions of dollars, you can do whatever you want. But, right. but he's making a point, which is you don't have to go institutional, linear paths. Yep. There's a lot of different alternatives. Khan Academy is another th phenomenon mm -hmm. we love, mm -hmm. which is learning is a big data thing as well. So you're seeing people can have the world that their oyster, the world is their oyster if yep. they can apply themselves. I agree. So what are you guys investing in? Talk about and share with the folks out there the fund, the kind of things you're doing and what you're investing in. The primary investments are in software or hardware and in most cases in, in reference to uh, bringing, like I said earlier, introducing the youth into technology uh, or, or STEM, uh, other STEM areas. Um, the, the investments are in primarily in the equipment um, and or the software to get them started. Um, in most cases, I make the investments per, out of my personal income. Uh, I take, I set aside money out of my personal income and I use it to give back. Um, not, in most cases, it's you know, a five or $6,000 contribution. In some cases, it's a little more. I've rarely sought out help because I found that when you start asking for donors, then there's a, a factor of return on investment that needs to be applied. And I, I don't always have a way to make that happen because there's no guarantee that the investments will yield a successful student or a successful um, candidate into the, the, the field of technology. Um, but overall, that's the goal. And even if they just have fun doing it um, and they utilize some skills or, or bring skills to the table that may help them in a different career, then we still win. Um, technology is a huge proponent of what it takes to succeed in, in employment uh, and or um, entrepreneurship, whether you're in a technology field or not. So understanding you ha they haven't all been home runs, give us some examples of um, some successes, some singles, some doubles, some walks, some strikeouts. Sure, I, t I had a, a really good friend in Philadelphia who was a network engineer some years ago, got away from technology, um, and just basically fell, fell, fell into a hole where he was doing odds and end jobs. Um, he, he's over 50 now. Um, he just landed his second IT contract after a, a year and a half, year, year and a half of mentorship through me, um, and he is now a SQL Server DBA certified. Now that's a win because his income went from, well I don't know if he wants me to tell his income, but it was, it was in lower than 50,000 a year to um, just under $95 an hour. A huge win in terms of confidence building. What it, it took for, what it took for him to get to that point was just to believe that he can do it. it. It was no magic on my part whatsoever. It was just a matter of showing him that the technology wasn't difficult to learn as long as there was an interest in it. From you, what was in it? I mean, you, obviously the satisfaction yeah. of, of, uh, of helping out a friend, yeah. right? And, and there was a financial incentive for you as well? Or nope, no, no, no. Nope. I you have been- Paying it forward. Paying it forward. I, I'm 25 year IT te technologist. Um, my career is, I'm, I'm not going to say near the end, but I'm closer to the end than I am at the beginning. Um, and so I get a, I get a oh big, man, if you're really yeah, we're, 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 in, we're, in, we're in the grave. I don't know then. about that. <laughs> you dial back 10 years and I wouldn't We're in the that. grave if you're a, yeah, <laughs> come on. But, the, but the, 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 the general thing that I get out of it is satisfaction. I like to see people launch something, whether it's, now I'm a proponent of technology, so I always have that, that slight incentive um, to bring more technology folks into the world, um, almost like birth. But, um, at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be technology. I just like to see people succeed. What are the what are the skill sets that are scarce right now that you're you're seeing that are in demand? Developers, administrators, very simple but necessary skill sets within within all major corporations, medium-sized corporations, even mom and pop operations. Um, everybody needs help with networking, communication, connectivity. These are all scarcities and and. I do my best to try and, to introduce. And, and developers, double click on that. Mobile, obviously. Mobile. What else? Dot net, um, yeah. applications, financial. Mainstream stuff. Mainstream stuff, yeah. yeah. You guys are doing some amazing work, so I think you're on the right track, and, and there's, a, there's an entrepreneur, a friend of mine out in Silicon Valley, David Gerard, he was the uh, president of Google yeah. Enterprise. <laughs> okay. And so he's got some dope, but no, I mean, he, he actually raised funding, so he's got a company called Upstart, mm -hmm. where it's interesting, he takes stock in students Mm -hmm. where he invests in people mm -hmm. 
and they pay them back as an ROI okay. on their earnings. So mm -hmm. what it is, it's an interesting arbitrage, Dave, mm -hmm. and it's similar to what you're doing, I mean, a little bit different level, but I mean, he's basically saying, he's betting on people. Right. And he's encouraging people to go for their dreams with seed funding mm -hmm. to pay for their college bills mm -hmm. and or do something. And he gets a portion of their future earnings. He gets a portion of their future earnings. Guys are earnings. doing that with athletes now which is pretty high risk. The guy blows out his How knee. How come no one comes yep. into us and do the cube We're, you know, for our future earnings? Tech athletes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't elevated to that level. I haven't actually sought after any, any return of anything. And again, my That's return awesome. is just understanding that they got something out of it and the time was, was well used. Well, we have a term we call, we love ESPN, so we love sports. We call this the cube, the ESPN of tech. <laughs> and, and, okay. But there's a tech athlete out there out, uh, mindset where people just love tech and they love to play with it, not yep. so much to become the zillionaire, but yep. because just to do some good work and like throw some touchdowns, so to speak, and do some good work. You know, what's interesting is that you can become a zillionaire if you come up with a concept or an idea and something you create that the, glob the global economy needs. Right. Yeah, talk it, about mentoring, because the mentoring is key there. Let's just say you got a kid comes in, hey, you know, 50K, 25K, 10K, get the ramen noodles, our friends work on a project, mm -hmm. and that's really all you need. Get some Amazon cloud going or Blue Mix, and then like, then they're out in the wild. You yep. got to protect them. So is that part of the program? You probably some mentoring and, and other things? The mentoring primarily gets them started. Um, where they go from there really is up to them. I don't push them in into any particular area. I just want them to, one, I want them to have fun with it. Um, technology was fun to me, and I guess that's where it comes from. Um, I thoroughly enjoy doing what I do, and, and I don't have any struggles with it, so that's where it comes from. And if the, as long as they're getting that from it, then for me it's worth the time. Um, but once they get the introduction, what typically happens is they light up and they see the possibilities that they didn't get from school. Not that the school didn't do a good job, but sometimes it's hard to tap, in on, tap into that true interest, um, and they believe they can do it. So I'll give you the final word on this segment. Share with the folks out there that on the business side, potential uh, folks to collaborate with for your organization, all for the young kids out there that are watching. Mm -hmm. What's it all about? What's up next for you guys? Uh, what, are you, what are you going to do next? Well, we're going to continue doing what we do. Um, we're, we're basically looking for youth. Um, in, in any age, it's really not about age, it's really just about thorough interest. Um, if you're interested in learning about technology on any level, any scale, um, and what I don't do, I have connections to connect you know, look, hook you into a portal of people that may help. Um, if you want to learn how to develop code, you know, there's a ton of uh, organizations out there, some nonprofits, some for profit that help with developing code, uh, like hackathons and things like that. Um, but thoroughly, as long as you are interested in, 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 in finding your way in, in a STEM career, um, give us a call. STEM is hot, Craig Brown, uh, PhD, inside the cube, <laughs> at Craig Brown, PhD, uh, his Twitter handle, uh, worth follow. Uh, thanks for coming on the cube. This is the cube, we're live in Las Vegas. This is the cube, extracting the signal from noise, sharing that with you at IBM Insight. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>